Welcome, welcome. We are so excited to be a part of this uh, camp campus visit uh, series that we have starting today. Uh, for all of you that are joining us, um, we are going to have the great pleasure of visiting some institutions, learning about some of the programs and opportunities they offer, as well as um, listen to some representatives from each of those institutions. And so the one person that you guys should meet, which is myself, <laughs> I'm going to be one of the people guiding you through these um, virtual visits. There may be opportunities or times when you are going to um, hear more from another Focus Trainer, but we are Focus Training. We are a leadership development company that travels uh, and work with students all around the country in all 50 states in leadership development and college readiness programming. And so a little bit about me. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, where I currently am right now. I went to the University of Memphis and graduated with a bachelor's in broadcast communications. So my goal was to be on TV um, doing entertainment news, but now I am having the privilege of traveling and working with students. So even though I'm not on TV, there's still opportunities for me to reach out and actually work with students, um, like, like we said earlier, from all over the country. And so what I would like for you to do is we're going to talk about expectations. And so when I talk about expectations, we want to know you join this group, you join this program today, and you want to be a part of this campus visit for a reason. And so we want to know exactly why were you a part of this? What is it something that you would like to get out of this? And so when you talk about your expectations, those will be expectations for yourself, meaning you would like to get certain information, certain questions answered about the individual college that we're going to be visiting today, um, expectations for others. As we all are going through this experience, what expectation would you like to have from all the people that are around you or they are also going through this experience? And then where it says for us, what expectations do you have from your focus trainer? Like I said, I'm going to be the person that's going to be guiding you through this experience. You may have opportunity to meet some other focus trainers throughout this campus visit series. So what would you like from us uh, in order to make sure this experience is great for you as well? Like I said, this could be for yourself. It could be for everyone else in this group, or it can be for the focus trainer. So right now we have to learn more about educational opportunities at USM. Yes, so learn about educational opportunities at USM. How do students get between two campuses? Yes, they actually have three campuses. And so uh, that is a good question. Uh, general questions, programs, and the usual admissions uh, information questions. And so once again, hopefully all these expectations, our goal for the, all these expectations to be addressed throughout this experience. And just to let you know, uh, one thing, we want to introduce a, an amazing group to you guys. These are going to be your college access coaches. These are your college access coaches. These are going to be your coaches that are going to help you throughout this process while you're in school, but also help you plan and get prepared as you go on to some form of higher education. Now that you see their photos on the screen, but we're actually going to give some time, a couple of seconds for each one of them to introduce themselves to you, um, because more than likely you will be seeing, if not all five of them, definitely a couple of them throughout this campus visit series. So starting off first, we have Sue. Sue, if you can go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Sue Karen, and I am a college access coach or a scholar coach with Gear Up Maine. And uh, Gear Up Coaches will be visiting your schools and talking to you about what we do later. So we'll move on from there. Um, I graduated from the University of Maine at Farmington with a Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education. I have a master's degree from Thomas College in Waterville, Maine. And um, I'm from Augusta. And an interesting fact about me, I zip lined across a waterfall bigger than Niagara Falls. Oh, okay. All right. That, that's nice. Nice. And so our next CAC will be Mary. Hi, folks. I'm Mary Freeman. I am a college access uh, coach in um, central western Maine, and I live in Wayne, Maine. Uh, my undergraduate degree also came from the U University of Maine at Farmington um, with, a, it was an elementary education 
with a concentration in mathematics. And then my master's degree came from UMaine Orono in middle level education. Um, an interesting fact about me is I have five dogs. That is interesting, especially from a person who's not a pet person. <laughs> And as you can see in the chat, there are people that are pet people. They're excited about that, Mary. <laughs> Next, we have Dory. Hi, everybody. I'm Dory Fellman. I'm a Schuyler coach for uh, uh, Western and Central Maine in some of the outlying rural schools. Um, my college, I went to Kennebec. Valley Community College where I got my associates in business management and then I went to UMF and got a double master in business and economics and I got my master's in education from USM so um, all over the place and my hometown is Starks, Maine very little town that has no electricity right now and an interesting fact about me is I myself was a first generation college student. Nice to see everybody, sort of. <laughs> nice. Nice. And so that's uh, really great to know, Dory, especially if there are any students that are a part of this program that are uh, first generation students. Uh, she can definitely give you some of her experience of um, the things that went through as she's been the first in her family to go into college. Uh, the joys and also some of the struggles that uh, that she went through. So that's great. Thanks for sharing, Dory. Next we have Brittany. Hi there. I am Brittany Remory. I am a college access coach um, slash scholar coach for the kind of eastern and down eastern parts of Maine. I went to the University of Maine Orono and I got my bachelor's degree in elementary education. I currently live in Ellsworth, Maine, but I grew up in a little town called China, Maine. And an interesting fact about me is that my husband and I are expecting our first child in December. Congratulations. Nice. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, finally, but definitely not least, we have Mr. Chris Young. Um, unfortunately, he cannot be available with us, uh, be a part today, but we have Sue that's going to speak on his behalf. All right. Chris is the fifth um, scholar coach with Gear Up Maine, and um, he is unfortunately uh, a victim of the storm this morning. He has no power and is not able to connect with us. But um, Chris is a graduate of the University of Maine. He was a poli sci and education major. He got his master's from Thomas College in computer education technology. He is also a proud first generation student, as am I and Dory. And I don't know, Mary, are you first gen? No, nope. Brittany? No. Nope. So there's a few of us on staff here that are. Um, and then Chris's fun fact is that he was a college basketball coach for 11 years. Nice. Nice. I was not in athletics. <laughs> I was on the sideline cheering him on with a saxophone. I was in the band, marching band and pep band. So students, these are your college access coaches. Like I said, they're gonna be here to help you throughout this process. And throughout these the series of campus visits that we are gonna be going through, you're gonna get a chance to meet, if not all five, but definitely a good number of the five throughout this experience. But then they're also gonna be reaching out and being in contact with you even outside of this campus visit series. So please be on the lookout for them, but also um, be proactive and reach out to them, especially if there's going to be any, uh, if you need any help uh, throughout this college readiness process. So now what to expect during this series. So we will be visiting colleges virtually, obviously. Um, we're going to be visiting 10 colleges uh, in total. 
Uh, the next thing we're going to be uh, for this every program we're going to have a portion of college readiness content that we're going to go over a small bit of college readiness co content and each one will be different and so you want to make sure that you always come prepared with some materials uh, to write down some answers and take down some notes because not only are you going to learn about the college but you're going to learn about things you can do to set yourself up and to be better prepared for college for instance, today we're going to be going over the do's and don'ts when you are doing a virtual, uh, doing a college visit, whether it's virtual or in person. Um, the next thing you're going to be receiving is a sidekick, and that you will receive that in your emails as well as it will be in the chat in a second, where you can pull that up, and that has some amazing information for you all um, that talks about the colleges that you that we're visiting, give you some fast facts. And it also has spots in there where you can take notes and once again, write questions. So either have your own personal pen and paper ready or make sure, or I guess, or and have the sidekick ready. So you have so many uh, ways of getting resources. And last but not least, uh, we will be uh, celebrating and be about all of the participation that you will uh, be a part of during this uh, program. So we have some raffle prizes. Yeah. So. If you can see on there, they're gonna be raffle prizes. There are gonna be two types of raffle prizes, just so you'll know. The first one, after each campus visit, we're going to put names into um, the internet, into this website, and is, we're gonna pull out two names. So those two students um, that get their name pulled for an each campus visit experience will receive an Amazon digital gift card. So that's awesome. And then for the students, that participate in several of the workshops, your name will go into a drawing pool to raffle out to win a pair of Apple AirPods, okay? So you have two chances you can either win a digital gift card or you could possibly win a pair of Apple AirPods. But in order to do that, you have to be a part of the program. You must stay till the end, you must participate. And what I mean by participating, because it's virtual, virtual, if we ask, do you have any questions? Uh, put something in the chat. If we have you do a challenge, you put something in, you know, turn on your camera, do the, do the challenge. We want to make sure that you are participating, not just sitting there because we want you to enjoy this experience as well. And so now we want to jump into uh, some co college readiness content. Like I said a second ago, we're going to be focusing on the do's and don'ts when it comes to a college visit. And these are, a lot of these do's and don'ts are going to go for both virtual or in person. Um, but if, make sure you're taking these notes because we're going to go through some important information. As well as if you have any questions at any time, I should say this earlier, at any time if you have any questions, please put those in the chat. Um, myself and Aura will be looking at the chat and making sure we answer the questions to the best of our ability. And if we don't have the answer, before this program is over, we're going to do our research to make sure we get the answer for you. So as we go through this, by all means, ask away. So the first thing when it comes to, or the first step, I should say, when it comes to visiting a college, you want to make sure that you actually do your research. So where, once again, whether it's virtually or in person, before your visit starts, look up, go on the website and look up the school. Get some information down. See if it, there are questions that are going to pop up in your head of things that you're not unsure about from looking on the website. Write that down because when you're on that visit, that's a question that gives you that's an opportunity for you to get clarification on those questions that you may have. And there are many ways to do this. You can go straight to the school's website and you can also use College Board. And as you see, this is just a printout or a screen image of College Board of the college that we're going to be visiting today. As you can see, it gives you the type of school, the size, uh, that gives you some information as far as graduation rate, retention rate, financial aid packages. So this is a great tool to use throughout your college search um, experience because once again, you get an instant snapshot of the college that you're looking into. So I would say, do your research, use those two, the actual school's website, and definitely go on the College Board and put in that school so you can get some information ahead of time. The next thing you want to do is sign up for an official tour. Now, students, this is what's really important, especially during these days, is that before 2020, there were not a lot of schools. There was not a huge number of schools that were doing virtual 
business and virtual tours. This year, majority of all student, all institutions are doing some type of virtual um, tour or virtual way of getting to know your admissions counselors, financial aid counselors. So go on your individual school website and there's gonna be an area where you can put in that you would like to be a part of a virtual visit. They will let you know how those are set up, how often they do those. Some of them may do an actual virtual open house those are extremely big uh, currently for this fall are doing virtual open houses. So make sure you go on and sign up for them. Now I spoke to some of my admissions counselor friends and they wanted me to tell all students when I talk about being prepared for college visits. It's extremely important not just to sign up for a visit, but to fill out any informational um, um, cards or sites of um, things that they want you to fill out. A lot of times students do these in-person visits or they do a virtual visit and they don't put in their information so it's hard for them to continue the communication after your visit. So if you get on the website and they ask for you to fill out an inquiry card to ask about the high school you go to, the grade you're in, your address, it's important for you to fill those out. Um, one, they're gonna be sending you uh, in the mail uh, just information about their school, but once again, now your name is gonna be able to go to the appropriate admissions counselor that is in charge of your region or in charge of your school. And they'll be able to reach out to you through email, text, or phone call. So make sure you sign up. Now, the next thing is that when you do a virtual or physical visit, on the general side, I should say, that they're gonna usually go with and visit with an admissions counselor. So you'll be able to meet with an admissions counselor, a person that hopefully will be filling out your, uh, or reading and reviewing your application. Usually you meet with someone within financial aid so they can talk to you about the scholarships and FAFSA and different um, financial aid opportunities for you. And then you get a tour. So those are, that's usually the basic, basic um, plan for a campus visit. Now, if you're really interested in a particular department, whether it's academic department, athletic department, music department, whatever thing that is really uh, specifically interesting to you, you need to one, ask can there be a part of your tour? And if they say that they're unable to, you need to contact their department yourself and let them know, hey, I will be on your campus on Tuesday at this time. Is there any way that I can speak with someone within their department, whether it's a dean, professor, or even a student? You never, um, nine times out of 10, if you take the initiative to do that, to contact the individual departments, more than likely they will try to find someone that can speak with you during that time. So just because the college say, oh, we can't have you meet with athletics, we can't have you meet with someone in the theater department, we can't have you meet with someone in the nursing department, you just tell them thank you, and then when that, then you contact those areas and see if you can actually visit with them while you're on your tour. That's a really good point. A lot of students do not do that, just so you know. A lot of students do not do that. And then also, this is your opportunity where, especially if you're contacting the academic department, you can ask them if they do any shadowing. And there are schools that actually allow high school students to come on that campus and they'll connect you with the college student and you get to actually shadow that student, go into the class with them, just so you can get that actual experience. So make sure you ask those questions as well. The next thing, so you have your campus visit scheduled and everything is great. And so now you're ready to go to the, the campus or the, the virtual tour, you need to have questions prepared. And so when we talk about question, having questions prepared, you must, the way you want to need to align your questions are with, to make sure you get the actual answer you want. Meaning there's so many times I worked with students and they were asking admissions counselor, do you have a nursing program? And they say, yes, how is it? How is it is not a question that you wanna ask at, on doing a campus visit because they're not gonna tell you if it's bad or not. <laughs> they're gonna say, oh, it's great, it's the best. You need to ask, what specifically do you wanna know? If you're going into nursing, you wanna know how, what's the percentage of students that actually passed the board the first time? Cause that's gonna let you know the type of education. If you wanna go into business, what kind of alumni program do, do you have that attaches students that are graduating in, with a business degree to people that already have businesses? Because now you know that you're getting some type of network through that. So you want to be really clear and specific on the type of questions that you want to ask. You never want to say, how is a major? They're always going to say it's good. They're always going to say that. Figure out what is it that you really want to know about that major and ask those questions. 
Two things are going to come from that. One, you're going to get the answer that you really need to help you make your decision. And two, you're going to look very impressive to the admissions counselor because they're not used to students asking such clear and precise questions. So what you're going to see now on the screen, we provided just a couple. There are so many questions that you can ask, but we provided just a couple of questions that you can ask on a, on a campus visit. So look at some of these questions and in the chat, and this is going to be for both students and staff. In the chat, I want you to put in one of the questions that you think that you would like to know most about the college that we're going to be visiting today, which is University of Southern Maine. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds, but in the chat, it can be both students and staff just from this list, or if there's a, another question that you feel uh, you would like to ask, definitely put that. But I would like to hear at least from every single person in the chat that's on here today. And while I wait, I'll go over some of the questions. We have, uh, what is the cost of attending the school here, which is extremely important. important. Uh, what is the student to, uh, student to professor ratio? You would like to know, are they mostly large classes or smaller classes? Because you need to figure out what's gonna be the best educational situation for you. Uh, we always get a lot of questions of can you have a car for the first uh, can you have a car for the first time on campus or do you have to live on campus as a freshman and there are a lot of uh, campuses that have uh, both or neither so it's really important for you to ask that and you hopefully all of you that are going on to some form of higher education would like to get involved on your campus so the type of clubs and organizations um, that you have um, at your institution what do the dorm rooms look like? Yes, you want to know, do, are they community bath or single bath or, or share bath? One roommate, two roommates or quad rooms, which are you plus three other roommates. And so once again, this can really affect the decision that you make as far as colleges. And I see, is there a math and writing tutoring center? That is a great question. And thank you for putting that in there. You, one thing that you all should be making sure you ask while you're on a visit is what type of academic in academic, physical and mental support does the school offer to students? You wanna make sure you're able to be successful in the classroom. You wanna make sure you're taking care of your mental health. And if there are any issues, what, what, do the, what does the school have to help you there? And then also the physical side, as far as making sure that you try to stay away from the freshman 15 as much as possible, or in Latrell's case, freshman 20. Uh, <laughs> I did not go to the, to the gym, but I started my sophomore year. I started my sophomore year. Um, and so, and we're gonna talk about some of these throughout this experience itself. So keep some of these questions on hand when we get to our admissions counselor, as well as uh, some of these questions may be answered during our campus tour. So just to finish off uh, these things before uh, you go on a campus visit, you want to dress for the occasion. You will be walking if it's a physical tour. You will be walking. So you want to come with comfortable shoes. Um, on the virtual and physical uh, campus visit, I want to use the word comfortable very lightly because I don't want you to be so comfortable that it looks like you rolled out of bed and you just say, okay, I'm ready for a visit. Um, you still want to look somewhat presentable. You don't need to come in a three-piece suit. You don't need to have a prom dress on for these visits, but you want to look like you're at least cared about uh, the, uh, the presentation that you're putting out there. Once again, that's both in person and virtually. Uh, on the virtual side, they would love for you to turn on your camera to admissions counselors and see who they're talking to. So you want to just make sure you try your best to look uh, somewhat professional. Now, you wanna print out a campus map. If you're anything like me, directions are not my forte. So even though the people can say, hey, go to this uh, light and cross the street and you'll be right here at the Welcome Center, that won't be good enough for me. I need the map. And I was, <laughs> so you wanna make sure you have a map of the campus. And that way, if for some reason you there are other areas that you were not able to visit during your tour, you can go on that tour yourself, once again, online or in person. Now, many of you have these devices that have cameras on them now. So you can either take your actual phone with you and make sure you take plenty of pictures or actually bring a camera because this is gonna make sure, help you remember the experience when it's time for you to sit down and look at all the colleges you visited. These pictures can help, remember, help you remember some of the, uh, the feelings that you had about the campus. And last but not least, you wanna be professional at all times. 
be professional at all times. Remember the people that you're going to be meeting on these campus, vis campus visits, they are going to be the people that are going to possibly read your application or at least influence it. I always tell students when I was an admissions counselor for a college, yes, I read the application for the students, but when they came to visit me, they got a tour by my uh, student ambassador board. So those current college students that gave the tour, guess what they did after they finished the tour? They came into my office and told me everything that happened on the tour. So they told me if the student was still professional, they told me if the student uh, acted out, and that actually did play a part in my decision because that lets me know who the student really is. I talked to the financial aid counselor or the financial aid counselor will call us and let them know about their experience with you. The person that checks you in at the front desk, our front desk worker, she will send me messages on the computer while you're waiting in the lobby if there are things you're doing that are inappropriate waiting in the lobby. So everyone is watching. So you want to make sure you're professional at all times from beginning to end. Oh, I just see a comment, uh, making sure you don't wear too much heavy cologne or perfume. Yes, you do not want to, you do not want people to smell you 30 feet before you even come to them, as well as you're going to be outside a lot, especially on the physical campus uh, visits. And so that may not mix well um, with a lot of perfume and walking around outside. So make sure that you just have uh, great hygiene and be professional, be professional. Now, today's visit is going to be, as you all know, is going to be University of Southern Maine. There are three campuses. We have the Portland Gorham and the Lewiston, I hope I said that right, uh, campus. We're going to be uh, in, in total, but we wanted to share some quick fast facts with you before we bring up our admissions counselor who's going to talk to you a little bit more about how to get accepted into the university, also answer some questions. So as we're going through this, are there questions that you already know you would like to ask about the university at any time? Once again, at any time, you can put those in the chat and we will be saving those questions to ask an admissions counselor after the end of his presentation. So just to go some quick fast facts, we have when they were founded, the school colors, blue and, blue and yellow, uh, the Siberian Huskies as their um, main mascot. Our enrollment, um, our undergraduate enrollment, so I want to make sure that's clear, all this undergraduate enrollment, uh, six to 300 students. Uh, the acceptance rate, 85%, which is a great percentage there. Um, some of the popular majors, biology, journalism, and business. Now, when we say popular, that does not mean that's the only major they have. Um, those are just some of the, as far as population of students are heavily in the biology, journalism, and business sector. As you can see at their yearly tuition, and I want to say to all my students, no matter what age you're in, continue to each year go and check on the schools you're interested in on their yearly tuition because they can change each year. So make sure you always stay up to date uh, with that. And you can see some of the financial aid packages that they um, have received. 57% of undergraduate students receive some form of uh, federal grants, 49% uh, on federal loans, um, and then overall 78% of need, financial needs met in the undergraduate, for undergraduate students. And then just want to share some of the demographics of, on, on the campus. And so as you can see, these are just some quick fun facts, uh, fast facts. These are also, a lot of these are also in your sidekick as well. So for, for some reason, if you are not able to uh, get right down this information. The sidekick is going to have this information in there as well. And so, with that being said, we have our presenter from the admissions office at the University of Southern Maine here to speak with you all. Um, he's going to be giving you, once again, information on the university as a whole, how to get accepted to the university, as well as answer questions. We want to encourage you once again to please put in questions as you as um, the present presentation is going on because once he finishes, we're going to have a quick Q and A and we'll be able to um, ask some of the questions that you all have put into the chat box. So, with that being said, I want to welcome everyone, um, Mr. Eric Hansen, uh, admissions counselor for University of Southern Maine, 
At this time, if you're able to and feel comfortable, to, uh, comfortable, please turn on your camera. So it's always great for the presenter to see who they're speaking with. Uh, if you're able to and if you feel comfortable, make sure you have something to write with and something to write on and say you can take notes. And I can't say it enough, send in those questions. And without further ado, Eric, the Thanks, show, Satrell. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, happy to see you. Um, and thanks, uh, Garup, for putting this together. I, I really appreciate it. I admire what you guys do as an organization. Um, I used to be a high school teacher, and I, I worked with um, Garup a little bit and some other similar organizations. And I'm, I was always really impressed with, with, with what those guys did. So thanks for coming. And I'm going to put together a little presentation for you. I'm going to try to breeze through it. I'm going to share my screen right now. Um, Latrell already went over a few of the things that I'm going to go over, so I won't linger too much on them. But first of all, can everybody see my screen? Just want to make sure you guys are good. All right, perfect. So uh, University of Southern Maine, uh, located in Portland, Gorham, and Lewiston. Like he said, uh, the only two campuses, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later, that you as an undergraduate student will probably end up dealing with. They're going to be Portland and Gorham, uh, maybe Lewiston, but I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Uh, some fast facts about USM. Uh, we have a 13 to 1 student faculty ratio. Uh, so you have those smaller class sizes, you really get to know your professor and, and build a community in the classroom. Uh, we have 53 majors, uh, 74 minors, and if you're interested in going a little bit further, uh, we'll see what you think after four years. But if you are interested, we have 28 graduate degrees as well, and we have something called an accelerated pathway, which allows you to get a master's degree in, in five years, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Uh, we have 8,500 students, so it's about a medium-sized school, um, and split between the two campuses, it can somewhat seem a little bit smaller sometimes. And we have 295 full-time faculty. So you're really, with those small class sizes and the large number of full-time faculty, you're really gonna get to know your professors. Within your major, you're probably going to take multiple courses with those professors, which can only help you when you're applying for jobs and, and asking for recommendations. They're, they're really gonna know who you are. So you guys are from the area, so you probably know where we're situated on the map. This is more for people who are from away. Uh, but we're about two hours from Boston, uh, maybe four hours, five hours from New York, southern southern Maine. So some people call it northern Massachusetts, but it's it's still Maine, uh, but it is accessible. It's easy driving distance to some of the uh, bigger cities in the area. Uh, if you haven't been to Portland recently, uh, I probably wouldn't recommend it now because of COVID, but once once that's all cleared up, it's it's a pretty great city, uh, really good food, really good art scene, very walkable, uh, one of the safer cities in the U.S., and it's got that perfect blend of, of urban and natural, so there's a couple of miles outside the city, you can do the coast, you can go hiking, you can go into the woods, there's, there's plenty of rolling farmland, it's, it's a beautiful spot but there's also that small urban area in Portland that you can take advantage of if you're interested. So those three campuses that I mentioned earlier, Gorham is located about 20 minutes to the west of Portland. It's our residential campus right now. Uh, we only have residence halls on the Gorham campus, although we are building, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, uh, another residence hall in Portland that should be ready in 2023. So if you're a junior now, a senior, and you're, and you're just thinking about applying, by the time you're an upperclassman, if you come to USM, you should be able to take advantage of the residence halls in Portland. Uh, Portland itself, uh, our campus is right downtown, and both campuses are easily accessible to really any student, even in the same day. We have a shuttle service that runs between the two campuses uh, on the class schedule, so you could conceivably take classes in Gorham in the morning, in Portland in the afternoon, and it's about a 25 minute bus ride between the two, uh, which is only for students. So the public is not gonna be riding that bus. It's heated, there's Wi-Fi. So a lot of kids will do their homework or, or their reading on the way between Portland and Gorham. Uh, Lewiston is a little bit farther north. Uh, it's really more to serve the Lewiston area and that community. Although we do have a couple of programs there that you may have to travel to if you're in that particular program. Uh, occupational therapy is one of those programs nursing, and we do offer some other um, general electives and, and courses up there. So you happen to live in the Lewiston area and, and want to take some courses there, that, that is a good option for you. 
Um, we really think that we're focused on academics, but one of our principles at USM is that you should really be learning by doing. So we're really going to emphasize real world, real world experience, internships, co-ops. Um, you, it's really difficult to get through a degree program at USM without doing some sort of hands-on project. So, and this is pretty important. It's a lot of people will go through, and if you're only taking academic classes, you may like the coursework, but you may not like the job at all. So this gives you a chance to understand if you like the job, if you're good at it, or if you really don't want to do it at all, if you want to do something else. It also helps you cultivate professional skills, you build relationships with, with employers, with the local community, and that can only help you. You're going to have people who can give you recommendation letters, who may be willing to hire you after you're finished your education and, and are looking for a job. Uh, and you're really going to learn how to practice what you're studying in the real world. So we're very career focused. We also provide a lot of opportunity for research. Uh, if you don't know that much about what that's about, uh, a lot of the times graduate schools are where students go and do hands-on research, work with professors, get funding, but we actually provide that on the undergraduate level. So any student can apply for funding to pursue a project within their department, usually work with a professor, lay out the scope of the project, uh, really do their own research with resources and support provided. And we've had a lot of really cool things come out of that. Uh, and at the end of every year, we have a big symposium where students have done research and they present in front of the community and their professors. So if that's something you're thinking of, if you're thinking about maybe going to grad school in the future, are you really just interested in digging more into your field and, and doing some real personal research? Uh, we really do try to emphasize and, and give every student that opportunity. We do a lot of service learning too. Uh, we really feel like giving back to the local communities is important, uh, not only because it's a good thing to do, but it benefits us and you if you can demonstrate that you're uh, community oriented, service oriented, it reflects positively on the university and, and you and somebody hearing that you're coming from USM after USM just helped them out with a project uh, the past semester, they might be a little bit more inclined to look at your application or, or build a, a, a relationship with you. So it's something if you're really interested in community, if you're really interested in uh, understanding the area and, and putting down roots in this place that you're going to school, uh, USM is a, a good place to do that. Uh, we have athletics as well. Uh, the big question I usually get is, do you have football? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, we have hockey. It's Maine. I, I get more of that in Massachusetts and in Connecticut and things like that. Uh, but we do have pretty much everything else, baseball, basketball, uh, and then a whole host of, of intramural sports as well. Um, we're in B3, so it's not too competitive. Um, students really enjoy it, I think. Uh, a lot of the athletic students are really good community oriented people. They're in and out of the office when we're in the office um, all the time. And it's, it's a really good atmosphere for, for student athletes. All right, let's get into uh, actually applying some merit aid and, and some nitty gritty details about what that process looks like. Um, in terms of scholarships, uh, we offer pretty significant merit based scholarships uh, for in state students and out of state students. So if you live in state, Anything above a 2.75 to a 3 is going to get uh, what's called our USM Scholars Award. Uh, anything from a 3 to a 3.5 is going to get the Dirigo Scholars Award. And then anything above a 3.5, all of these are automatic, are going to get the President's Award, which is the highest merit that we have available. And that's just automatic. You don't have to apply for it. We, we also do have scholarships that you can apply for. And is a pretty good scholarship resource page on our website that I'd encourage you to check out if that's something you're interested in. Um, in terms of merit-based scholarships, I know some people are uh, inclined to procrastinate. I'm definitely one of those people, but if you're interested in getting a merit scholarship, really make sure you apply before April 1st. It's the cutoff. We might be able to award something after that, but I would try to get it in before that. You never know when a document is going to go missing. And you really want to get that merit aid. It's, you don't have to work for it at all. And I've, I've seen people who've applied late who just didn't get it because they, they dropped the ball or, or something happened. But I, I really don't want to see that happen to you. Uh, we also provide need-based aid. So make sure, and I'm sure uh, these guys are going to help you out, but make sure you are completing your FAFSA. Make sure your parents or guardians are completing your FAFSA. You're not going to be eligible for financial aid unless you work through that. 
it's not as scary as it sounds. If you need any help, these folks will probably be happy to help you. You can reach out to me, our office. We'd be happy to help you answer any questions. But a lot of scholarships are only available if you fill that out. So make sure you're, you're doing that and, and you're aware of what it is. Um, like Latrell said, we have some grants. Um, we have some New England tuition break programs. So if you're from out of state, which I don't believe anybody here might be, but if you are, um, we have some reduced cost programs if they're not available in your local area and tend below the in-state rate. Uh, if you're Native American, we have a tuition waiver. So if you're interested in that, uh, please feel free to uh, contact me or, or the office and we'd be happy to walk you through that. And uh, if you happen to be in the military or your family members are, we have benefits available as well. Let me skip back one slide. Uh, in terms of estimated cost, um, so one year full-time undergraduate without any scholarships, the average is uh, 19200 If you're getting scholarships, it's going to be a little bit lower. Uh, Out-of-state international is 33 And then that New England regional I mentioned, uh, which only applies in a few programs, is 24 uh, we're really trying to lower the cost of attending. So in terms of local universities, other comparable colleges and institutions, we've really managed to lower the margins and make it affordable. One of our goals is to have students graduate with either no or significantly reduced debt, which you might not be thinking of now, but I have friends and, and know people who were not thinking of it at the time, but wish that they had been. So. You don't want to come out with a lot of student loans and, and we really do try to provide resources and, and make it possible so that you don't have to or at least come out with significantly reduced uh, in terms of deadlines um, october 1st uh, the fafsa is available again don't wait to fill that out uh, early action uh, november 17th is the application deadline all that really means is that you're going to learn uh, whether you got into usm or, or any other university or college a little bit earlier than uh, your peers, your friends. Uh, December 1st, credential deadline. That just means you need to get all your documents in by that time. Uh, and then January 15th is when you're gonna know whether you get in and you'll be all excited and you'll know a little bit more before your friends uh, if you do early action. You don't have to do that. Um, it's just something some people are interested in. Uh, February 1st, if you're interested in nursing, uh, which is one of our more popular programs, is the deadline. It's a little bit earlier than some of our other programs. I've seen people uh, not know that and come in late and then uh, maybe didn't get the program that they wanted. So whatever the program is, make sure you're really looking up and seeing what the deadlines are, what the requirements are for that particular program, and make sure you get all your ducks in a row before that deadline so you don't have to be scrambling. Let me see. May 1st is when we'll let you know um, if you didn't do early action. Although you can still apply up until August the 15th, I would not recommend that you do that because you wouldn't be eligible for any of that merit aid that I, I just talked about. And then in terms of, like I said, August 15th, that's the last day that we're gonna accept any documents, any applications, really try hard to get it in before August 15th, shoot for closer to April. Uh, in terms of what we're looking for in an application, um, I read these all the time and uh, there's some things that are really nice to see and some things that um, maybe some people could work on. So I want to give you guys the inside tip and, and make sure you have a good application. Uh, we're going to need your high school transcript, obviously, uh, from your school. You can't send it. Some people will try it, but you can't just send it to me from your email address. Uh, it's not going to work. So just have your counselor send it to me um, or USM. And any if you're international, any TOEFL scores, um, if you don't know what that is, probably doesn't apply to you. But if you have questions, I'd be happy to talk through them with you or you could call the office. Um, right now, it's really only the high school transcript and the application that we need. Um, we're test optional, so we don't need SATs. Uh, recommendations are optional. Um, essay is optional. Pretty much everything is optional. Um, just because it says optional, uh, aside from the SAT, I would still maybe recommend putting one in. Try to get a recommendation from a teacher, a coach, um, so a boss, somebody in your uh, a youth organization, something like that. It's really going to give us some insight into who you are, uh, what you've done, what you're interested in, and it might influence our decision. Um, and try to write an essay. They're, they're fun to read. It's, it's pretty boring after a while to just get high school transcript, application, high school transcript, application. Um, you don't really know who the person is. And it sometimes it really does help us make our decision if, if you can uh, just give us a little bit of insight into who you are and what you're interested in 
maybe some of the struggles you've overcame or things that you're passionate about, your dreams, things like that. Um, I used to teach high school English and I used to have kids write college essays and there's this assumption that it has to be some tragic story or some major event in order for us to be interested in it or for it to tip the scales for you to get in. It, it really doesn't. I mean, it could be anything really. I've seen people just talk about an average day at their job or taking care of the little sister or a class that they really enjoyed or, or some passion that they found. As long as you can do it clearly, quickly, and it, it shows me something about you and, and why you might be uh, a good member of the community and, and how we could help you out at USM, uh, fulfill whatever your goals might be, that's what you should do. You should really try to put those things in there, who you are, uh, what your goals are, maybe something that you overcame, but don't feel like you have to tell some really tragic story. If you have one, you can definitely tell it, but you don't have to. Um, in terms of a um, couple other things, music and theater, there's an additional step. So if you're applying for the music program or the theater program, we're going to require that you do an audition or an interview. And once you apply, they'll schedule that for you. Uh, coming soon, I mentioned at the beginning, uh, in 2023, we're building a career and uh, student center and residence hall in Portland, uh, whereas before they'd only been in Gorham. And this will only be for upperclassmen. So if you're applying now, you should be an upperclassman around 2023. Uh, it looks like it's supposed to be, these are just drawings, but it looks like it's supposed to be a pretty fancy building. Uh, they're going to knock down a bunch of stuff and put in a big quad and it's right downtown, dining hall, residence halls, student center. Uh, libraries right there, right in the middle of all the academic buildings. So that's the, we're really excited about that. And that's something to look forward to uh, down the pipeline. And that's the residence hall that's going right next to the, the student center there with the, the planned quad. In terms of final thoughts, and then I'll, I'll take some questions and, and see if I missed anything, if anybody has any final questions, uh, stay connected. Uh, I'm an admissions counselor. There are a bunch of other admissions counselors in my office and really our only job is to make you successful through this process so if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us we text we email we'll answer the phone uh, we'll do a zoom chat a, a google meet a g chat whatever whatever they have now we'll do it with you and, and we'll really try to help you apply walk through scholarships walk through financial aid connect you with the department uh, connect you with a current student so you can shadow a class give you a tour to really anything you want we're happy to provide it. Just, just reach out. Don't feel nervous. Don't feel like you're being annoying. It's, it's really what we're here to do, and we enjoy doing it. So just stay connected. Uh, be mindful of deadlines. Uh, don't miss a nursing deadline. Don't, definitely don't miss a financial aid deadline. And final thing, set up your Main Street account, which is uh, when you apply, you just get a University of Southern Maine uh, main system email and account where we send all our correspondence, where you can check whether your documents are all in, uh, where you're, if, when you're finally admitted, you can uh, pick your courses and see your grades. It's really a one-stop shop. Um, some people don't set it up and then miss deadlines, miss emails. If you just go in there, really easy to see where everything is and it'll make the process a whole lot easier uh, for you. And that's all I have for you. Um, thanks for, for sticking around and I'm here for any questions if you happen to have any. All right, thank you. Thank you, Eric. Um, we do have a couple of questions out there and I'm, uh, I've been putting them out, kind of splitting them up so we can sure. Uh, make sure I get to all of them. So I'm going to start with a couple of admissions questions that were put in, uh, put in here. Uh, the first one is, um, it has to do when you were speaking about nursing and additional uh, application. Is there, are there, uh, are there any other majors that are set up like that where you need to do an additional application to be in the program? Um, not at this point and, and even nursing uh, isn't necessarily an additional application you just need to make sure you have it in a little bit earlier than um, the rest of the programs and we're looking for a couple specific things in terms of nursing um, you have to have at least a 3.0 GPA you have to uh, have at least a I believe it's a B plus in biology and, and chemistry and um, we look for A&P as well, but that's not a requirement. So really just those three things, uh, 3.0, get it in by, I think it was uh, January the 15th, 
and then bio and chem. Make sure you've taken those and, and have at least a B plus. Uh, we do do some exceptions. Uh, we don't really broadcast it that much, but say you're a little bit below the threshold, have a B minus or something in, in chem or get a 2.8 something. Uh, we do do nursing exceptions and we have a wait list. So say the first round, not all of them decide to come, but we'll go to the wait list. So don't feel like you can't apply for a program uh, if you're a little bit below the threshold. Great. Um, the next one is, um, there was on the slide, you had a box when they talked about turning in your, the requirements for admissions. It had a box about the, uh, it was a tip box that said about writing any disparities uh, in transcripts. Uh, could you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, for example, say your sophomore year was was pretty lousy or, or something was going on, um, whatever it might be, you, you were ill, um, family troubles, just didn't really feel like school that year, but then decided that, oh, I really want to go to college and your next two years are amazing. Um, don't just give us the transcript, just maybe leave a little note or add a portion to your essay explaining that. Um, doesn't need to be major. Uh, we understand that I mean, you might have been 14, 15 at the time and, and people's goals change as adults. So whatever might have been going on at, at the time or, or whatever your goals might have been, um, just explain it and we'll be happy to consider it and I'm really not going to hold it against you. Uh, with that being said, I have a, a question then it goes into the next question. Um, because we all are going through the pandemic, time and virtual learning do you this is your opportunity to say this is that something your admissions office has already taken into consideration when looking at transcripts um and i say that so you wouldn't get every single transcript would have a letter talking about how COVID affected them if that's something you all are already looking at yeah i should have mentioned that during that it's a good question um we pretty much every transcript that's coming in now is either no grades for, for the last semester or pass fail. Um, we're not holding that against anybody. We, we understand what was happening. Um, virtual learning was, was all over the place. So don't stress about that. Um, I, there's a lot of the trend of writing the COVID essay or, or telling your COVID story. Um, you can do that if you want. Uh, don't feel like you have to. Um, really never feel like you have to be pigeonholed in a college essay as, as long as you can show. Mm. You're a clear thinker and, and you're passionate about something and, and maybe explain any discrepancies. Um, that's, that's fine. It can be any sort of story. It doesn't have to be COVID related, but we are taking that into consideration. Nice. And that actually did go into the next question was about the essay. You just uh, answered that. But I mean, the real question that was asked is, do you have a favorite essay when you were saying about it doesn't necessarily have to be the tragic, but did you have one? Um, yeah, I think so. There was this one kid, he was a woodworker. It wasn't even an essay. He just sent in um, a series of like really well photographed images of this box, sort of puzzle box that he had made. And then he just put sort of a museum style, like, like the MFA or, or the Museum of Art, just tag, you know, by so-and-so, a little bit of description of what was going on at the time. And that was his essay. And I didn't really know how to evaluate. I think we admitted it. He was a really good student, but it was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, just thinking out of the box. Mm -hmm. Oh, literally, get it? Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys, that was a quick little pun. Sorry. Um, all right, great. Um, I always like to ask that question too, or I like when the missions council ask, ask that question because I know that they get a lot of, like you said earlier, overcoming essays. Yeah. And sometimes, like you said, it could be as simple as a day in the life of the student. Right. Um, another question is, um, what are tutoring or academic resources provided on campus? Yeah, so we have uh, two libraries. We have one on, on both campuses, Gorham and Portland, and we have uh, a writing center, and then we also have a tutoring center. Um, pretty much covers every discipline. It's all staffed by student volunteers. Um, generally, I believe you have to have at least a B plus or above in, in the course and be recommended by a professor, and then you can become a tutor for that particular course. Um, and it's a really good resource. You can just sign up online uh, or do a walk-in. And uh, a lot of people develop a good relationship with a specific tutor and, and work with that person um, over the course of the semester. Um, and it's a really good opportunity. If you, if, I mean, if you're completely lost in bio or you think you're not the best writer or whatever it might be, um, they're really helpful. It's, it's free one-on-one -on -one instruction, essentially. So it's a really good resource. Great. 
Um, and the last, well, I think it's like four more questions and they should be fairly quick. Um, are you able to have a car on campus as a freshman? Yeah, definitely. So we don't require that you live in the residence halls. Uh, you can if you like to, but you can have a car on campus and the parking pass is, is pretty reasonable. I feel like it's like $35. I want to say, don't quote me on that, but it's, it's <laughs> fairly low, I think. Uh, we have pretty decent sized commuter population. All right. And this goes to the security of the campus. Um, what uh, procedures do you all have, like lights or certain uh, transportation when it comes to security, campus security? Yeah, so we have um, a campus police force. Uh, we have those blue emergency lights, uh, like you'll see in a lot of places. Um, we have an emergency number, so you can um, just have it saved on your phone and, and dial the uh, campus police. And um, that's a pretty good resource. We also have that shuttle that runs between the two campuses, so you don't have to take public transportation um, where you need to go. And it, it stops, um, there's a route that it stops along in uh, the case of people living off campus it will make stops at, at some of those uh, off-campus residences as well. Hey, and, and I think it's just two more questions. Um, oh yes, for do you um, for admissions, when admissions opens back up and students are able to come and do on-campus visits, um, does your school offer any type of shadowing program where students can be connected to upperclassmen? Yeah, we do. Um, it's it's called shadow a husky or it has a name like that something a husky but yes you um, meet up with the students and uh, either attend one class with them or, or a couple of classes with them and maybe eat in the dining hall and um, explore the grounds they might give you a little tour as well uh, it's by request so if you do uh, happen to have an interest in that you can reach out either to me or, or just the office and we could set that up for you i'm not sure quite how it's working virtually right now i think that a couple people have tried to do it and been able to sit in on a virtual Zoom class. So that's an option as well. Nice, awesome. And so the last one is just your final words you'd like to give the students on why they should look into University of Southern Maine. Yeah, um, I think it's in a good spot. I mean, if you're looking for a blend between urban and, and rural, um, if you like the outdoors, but you want to be near a city, it's it's really great. I mean, you can drive outside of Portland and it's, um, you're in the woods pretty soon and rolling farmland and the coast. So in terms of atmosphere, um, I moved here just because of place. I, I love Maine. I have a lot of family here and moved here from the South a couple of years ago. And I, I like it quite a bit. If you're already from Maine and you're going, why should I stay? I mean, we have really good programs, uh, offer a lot of good scholarships for in-state students. Um, I have a lot of really good relationships with, with local employers and, organizations um, and we really do try to help the main kid uh, the main student and really anything you need we'd be happy to help you we're, we're community oriented um, very personable I have kids who wander into my office or far beyond the admissions process and just ask for things and it's sort of like I've noticed that happens a lot it's kind of the place where people you just wander into their office and they're happy to help you and the student body is, is very like that as well so good community good academics, uh, you'll probably get a job. So it's my final word, I think. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate that. And uh, if you don't know, this is um, recording so that the Gear Up staff will be able to send this off to other students as well. So there will be multiple students that will be able to watch and learn about the university even past today. So thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Yeah, thanks so much. And uh, keep doing the good work you guys are doing. I really appreciate it. Have a good day, Eric. Have a good day. All right, so students, next where, we're, where we have, we're going to go on a quick campus visit uh, and we're gonna highlight some important buildings uh, and departments on the campus. And so as we're going through, um, hopefully some of the questions that, uh, that were put into the chat that we did not ask Eric, those were gonna be answered during the tour. Uh, but you're still definitely able to continue to um, ask questions as we go along. So first on our tour, as you, it's important to know where you can see when it's time for you to go uh, and do a physical campus visit. It's important to know where you can meet up with 
Eric, and that is going to be in the um, Office of Admissions, which is in Bailey Hall. Uh, Bailey Hall is also um, the School for College of Science, Technology, and Health, but the, off the admissions office, the admissions welcome center, I should say, is inside of their building. So that's really important for you to know when you're going on campus, if you're looking on the map and you're trying to figure out where's the admissions office, it's within that, within that building. Uh, but that's where you will go in order to sign up for the campus visits, to meet with admissions counselors, and then also, uh, more than likely, that's what they, like you see in the picture, they'll be giving you a presentation before you go on to your actual campus visit. The next, um, he, and he mentioned this about the, with the tutoring area, uh, we have one of the libraries on campus. Uh, we have the Usher map in uh, Smith Center. Um, and so this is um, really one of their newer buildings on campus, as you can tell by the photo, but this is the one of the, the largest of the libraries for both of their campuses. And so this is where you'll be able to get, like you said before, tutoring services, but also they, that's where you'll be able to have a quiet zone, you have study areas in there as well. And so this is where, if all of the adults know on here, this is where you will spend majority of your time when you're a college student inside of the library. So it's a very important that you visit this while you're on campus. Uh, take a good look, go ahead and start finding a spot where you know that you have your late night study sessions um, because it, no matter what campus you go to, it's always important to know where that library is because that is where you will spend a lot of your academic time. So next on that list, we have one of the academic buildings, which is the John Mitchell sorry, John Mitchell Center. And so this department is home of the engineering and technology programs. So the facility is comprised of state-of-the-art technology laboratories, engineering suites, and digital video editing studios. And so if any of you are interested in this field of engineering, this will be one of the, this would be the building that you would go into. And as you can see, it goes from classroom settings to actual hands-on, uh, lab, labs and studios. Now, somebody mentioned um, about getting involved in student organizations. So this is where you will go in order to kind of see the kind of student life on campus. And that will be the Brooks Student Center. So this is where if you're interested in clubs, organizations, this is where the home office will be based where you can get as much information about the different uh, club and club organization opportunities out there. Um, at the beginning of the fall semester, and they uh, do, do it virtually this year, but also when they're back on campus, they usually have kind of an activity fair. And that's where you actually, those clubs organizations will have tables and you get to walk around and actually learn about the different organizations they have on campus. But then also if there's something that just does not fit one of your interests or interests of yours, this is the um, building you would go to to talk to them about starting your own student organization or club. Uh, so it is really important to know where about the Brooks Student Center, as well as some of the different events that happen on campus are housed here. Also within the Brooks uh, Center, we have the dining services. Um, somebody asked a question about where do you eat? And I know we understand that that is very important to everyone, not only uh, where you learn, but where you eat. Um, and so in the dining hall, um, here the main dining hall is the Brooks Dining Hall where you will be able to spend your, some of your meal plans, but also you'll be able to dine in a different variety of areas and foods that they have provided for you. And it's always, like always, they have definitely uh, food to cater to your needs, whether you are vegetarian, vegan, they have different areas and locations in the dining hall that provides a variety of food options for you. So once again, we want to make sure you get fed. Now, when it's time after you done finish with class, you have your education in, you've studied, you've gone and you had a great meal, and it's time to work out. Uh, so we have the Costello Fitness uh, Complex. And with this building, this houses the, the large area of Activities such as, as you see on your Zumba class, boot camp, personal training, yoga. They have basketball courts, tennis courts. Um, they also have weight rooms and different multi-purpose room, multi rooms uh, that you could be a part of and utilize as full-time students on campus. 
So this is area in outside areas as well. And so along with this, you're going to also have intramural uh, opportunities. So what intramural sports mean basically is that you're not on an NCAA team, but you're able to be a part of different sports uh, teams that you can make up with your friends, people in your residence hall, people in your major, and you actually compete against fellow students, fellow USM students. And many times they have actually their own championships, but that's going to be opportunities for you to still stay active, have fun, and actually have that team uh, element as well. Now, they also have sports uh, clubs. Now, sports clubs are a little bit more elevated than intramural sports because now these sports clubs, once, even though they're still not NCAA teams, they are teams that are housed uh, or comprised of fellow USM students, but this time you will compete or you had an opportunity to uh, compete against students from other uh, nearby institutions. So once again, it's not NCAA, not intramurals, it's that middle ground there. And speaking of NCAA sports, um, and, um, and the missions council mentioned this as well, but if you are interested in addition, uh, trying out to be a part of one of their teams, right here you have, you can see the list of uh, sports that they provide or they offer at USM uh, for their NCAA Division Three teams. Some things uh, like for women, you have field and ice hockey, lacrosse, uh, track, indoor and outdoor track and field for both uh, women and men. They have basketball for both, softball, baseball, wrestling, uh, men's wrestling, and men's golf, just to name a few. Just give me a second so everyone can read through those. And so now we have Hannaford Field, which is one of the newer additions to the campus. And this is where a lot many of the soccer, both men and women's soccer uh, games happen, the field hockey games as well. But then you'll also see a lot of the intramural, intramural and sports club teams that are having competitions on this field. But also if it's open as a, as a full-time student, you're able to go out there and kick the ball around and uh, you know just exercise while you're out there. But it is one of their newer additions to the campus. Next, we have the TRIO program. It was mentioned in one of the questions, one of the questions that were, uh, one of you put into the chat box is one to know about more additional support. And so at the University of Southern Maine, they do have a TRIO program. And so it is on set, this is the building that is in. They have their own building. As you can see, it's shaped as a house because they're there to kind of be that um, academic and emotional support uh, for you all. Um, the address is 7 College Avenue, just in case you want to know that. Um, but this is where you all are now part of Gear Up, and you have the, these great, amazing um, CAC college access coaches that are going to help you through this process while you're in high school and help you get into college. And then you can say the TRIO program is there to continue that work once you get into the school. So they're going to be there to um, offer some more academic support. They have different programming within their area focused on career, financial, and personal achievement and academic achievement. And so if once you are deciding on going to the USM, it's very important that not only when you go visit the school, you stop by their building and talk with the TRIO program representatives, just so I can give you more in-depth information on ways that they can support you and continue to support that your college access coaches are giving you now. There's that, equal, that same support is going to happen when you're in school. So please make sure you contact the TRIO program. You can always give them a call right now. You see Andrew Long is the representative or someone that you can speak with. Um, I'm giving it a little bit more time on the screen, just in case you want to write his email down. Uh, if you want to send him an email, that's students or staff, just to get more information even early as far as what TRIO programs uh, have to offer for you as a student. So now for all of you there may be interested in saying, you know what, I know the school may not be too far away, but I need to get out the house. I want to move into the residence halls, um, which we all encourage if you're able to please do that, please do so, because it just helps with that overall college experience. So Upton Hastings is approximately about 300 first year students in, in suites, in doubles. And so within those 
uh, within the residence hall was also amazing. And you're going to hopefully hear about this uh, moving forward as you go through your college research, um, is that they have living and learning communities for first year trans, uh, transition. What this means is living learning communities, there's residence halls where they just, you know, they're there for you to, you know, lay down, sleep, eat, all of those things. And then you have residence halls with learning, uh, living and learning communities. The living learning communities are that additional support within your residence hall that makes sure that you are comfortable in your area. So for instance, this first year transition, they're gonna make sure if you're a part, if you sign to be a part of this uh, living learning community, that means your roommates um, will be someone that's also a first year student. The people on your floor will be also students that are all first year. Why is that important? Because it's just gonna help that transition from you going on from high school into college a little bit smoother because you're gonna be surrounded by people that are also going through the same experience as, as you are. Now, this is just one of the living and learning communities that they offer at USM. There are several that are based on different interests you have, as well as academic um, interests that you have. So it's really important when you're looking into residence, uh, listening, looking into which residence hall you would like to live in, whether it's a USM or any other institution, ask about the living and learning communities and see which ones they have to offer for you as an incoming student. And then also I just want to mention about this residence hall is that with Upton and Hastings Residence Hall, within that building, they also have additional offices here. So this is where the Office of Residence Life is held, uh, Office of Student Affairs. What's also great by being um, a residence hall for a majority incoming students is that there's also the health and counseling service is located uh, within this residence hall. So once again, this is just additional support uh, for you while you're going through this transition uh, from high school into um, college. So make sure as you're looking into Upton Hastings that you check out those different opportunities that are um, either on the basement floor of Upton or the first floor of Hastings. So now this completes our virtual tour of the campus. We're gonna have an opportunity for Sue. I'm gonna turn it over to you at this time. If you would like to just share, once again, just share information about uh, some even more detailed information about some of the opportunities that you all as coaches will be providing for the students. Okay, thank you for all that information. That was fantastic. Um, as Gear Up Scholar Coaches, we'll be working with our high schools to visit the class of 2021, either virtually or in person if we get the opportunity to do so. Um, we will be offering support throughout your senior year, your filing of your FAFSA, your college application process. Um, and then once you start receiving um, acceptances from accept acceptance to matriculation when you actually get on your campus, and then we will be there to support you your first year on your campus, wherever you choose to go. So keep watch at school, speak to your school counselors, we will be um, reaching out to them and then we will be getting in touch with all of you. In the meantime, if you need us, you let your school counselor know and they know how to reach us all. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. And so with that being said, students, with that being said, a couple of things we want to remind you as we move forward is that after you visit any, uh, have any kind of campus visit, whether virtual or in person, there are still things that you need to do. So once the visit is over, that does not mean your time is over. No, the next thing you wanna do is research or go back and look at all your notes and then actually rate the school, rate the institution that you just visited. The reason why this is important, hopefully you're gonna be able to visit a good number of schools. After a while, you may forget things that you like, things that you didn't like at the institution. So that's why it's important for you to go back to your notes and say, okay, I gave this score, this school a rating of a three. Why did I give this school a rating of three? And you're able to look at your notes and say, oh, this is why I gave them a three. This is what they did not have that I was interested in. This is what they did have that I was interested in. And so then you could start looking at the list of schools that you visited and then start to narrow that list down. It is recommended that you create a list. I'm telling you right now, it's very important that you create this list just to make it easier for you as you go through this process. 
It's also really great if you're able to send a thank you email to the person that's presenting. If you're able to send a thank you email to the person that's presenting. Once again, this is important because one, students don't do this normally. Normally students do not do this. Two, by you doing it, that means that you are just put yourself, kind of put a spotlight on yourself to the admissions counselor. So they're gonna write their name down or they're gonna highlight your name. They're gonna make sure they recognize the fact that you did you know, go through a visit, but then after the visit, you send in a thank you for their time. And that's going to go a long way as they're continuing to send out information to students, but also reading applications. And then once again, it's always great to connect and continue to check in with the missions. A couple of things that you can do from them is find out once again, and I mentioned this at the beginning, find out if they're going to do any type of open house physical, uh, on campus or virtually. If they are doing, if they're going to be a part of any college fairs that are going to be coming around in your city. So if you find out that you're somewhere in your area, there's a college fair going on, and you don't know if the, if the college you're inter interested in is going to be there, contact the admissions office and ask them. Uh, once again, this is just showing how much you are interested in that school, and it's only going to look great uh, for you that you are taking the initiative uh, to be a part of this. So once again, you can tell that in none of the advice that I gave you today throughout the content earlier and the information I'm talking about now, none of this information is really difficult to do. None of it is. The key and the thing that you should know is that a lot of students just don't do it. So by taking these little bit of initiative on your own part, you are setting yourself above the rest. And that means you're going to be looked at a lot favorable uh, by just taking a couple of minutes and do research. A couple of minutes, write out questions. A couple of minutes, send a thank you email. Um, and then a couple of minutes, pick up the phone and just call admissions to say, hey, my name is Latrell Armstrong. I'm really interested in attending your university. I was just wondering, are there gonna be any college fairs in the area that you're gonna be a part of? They can say no, but what they, real, what they really did is wrote your name down and they say, okay, Latrell Armstrong has contacted our school. This student must be really inter interested. Let's keep our eye on this student. Those, that's how those things work. Before we officially close, are there any other questions uh, from anyone? And you can put that in the chat before we officially uh, close our first campus visit. So what we want to let you know moving forward, we have, like I said, this is a series of 10 campus visits, but I want to at least highlight the next four that are going to happen. So right now, whether you're watching this live or watching the recording, I'm going to leave this up here until we finish because we want to make sure that you know uh, what's going to happen next. So on uh, the 7th, we have University of, we have, well, basically we're going to be visiting a lot of our University of Maine uh, campuses from Augusta to Farmington. Um, we have, Hus is it Hudson or Hudson? Yeah, Hudson. 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 All right. I had Hussin. a feeling. I was like, let me give, do both just to make sure I don't uh, mess up the school. Uh, Hudson University. And so make sure you write these down. Students is going to be at the same time uh, at each one of these visits. So once again, each of the visits are going to pertain a college readiness, college readiness content on a different topic. We're going to have a presentation from someone from the, in, from the institution. We're then going to do a campus visit and we're going to give away some raffle prizes at the end. So well, hopefully you all really enjoyed this visit today. We look forward to seeing you at our next one on October, October 7th. I'd like to see all your faces here. And with that being said, I would like to thank you and have a great rest of your week.